Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new PNSO release. This is one that I was extremely excited to check out, as we have a Sintosaurus, and it is a very nice looking one. This is the first time, I think, as far as like these style figures go, that we've had a good one released by anyone, and uh, again... Being a PNSO version, you know it's going to be fantastic. So as far as what we see here on the front of the box, a beautiful image of the figure itself with a really nice, really striking paint scheme. And I have seen some images of others that had received their figure. And the paint job actually looks extremely similar to the prototype image, which is definitely a plus, something you don't see very often from any company. As far as what we have here on the side, again, PNSO, Dinosaur Museum, and again, Centosaurus. Some more information over here. This is a museum series release, so it's not quite the same style packaging that you get with many PNSO figures. You see the same thing again on the opposite side, exactly the same. There's no real difference, nothing too flashy on the box. And then if we have a look here at the back of the box, it's pretty much just again PNSO right there. The Centosaurus title down there, nothing really else going on. So let's go ahead, pop this out of the box and check this out. So, being a museum release, a museum series release, we straight away, of course, have a nice envelope full of awesomeness, as we have the PNSO logo, and again, Centosaurus, the title of the species, and then here on the back, we have a little sticker here with a nice skull on it, and then if we open this up, which, let's see if I did it last time without popping the sticker in half, let's see if I could do it this time, and... Very slowly we did it, all right. So if we bring all of this stuff out, everything's just kind of falling out everywhere. We've got quite a bit of stuff. So just like last time, we had a really cool kind of a set of cards that just gave you all sorts of information on the species. And that appears to be exactly the same case this time. So if we open this up, you can see as we go through here, again, you are just going to be given tons of information. And as you can see that they, well, they're not really cards, they're just kind of slips of paper, but they're actually labeled as far as like the numbers go. We're obviously not going to read all of this right now. That is for you if you purchase this, but you can see that it goes on for quite some time, giving you just heaps of information about the species. We are already at card number five. I don't know how many it goes to. I'm not sure if we can check that out so we go up to oh there's some stuff here at the end what is this at the end just some random cards i guess maybe you can write down some thoughts of your own i'm not too sure but we go up to 18 it looks like let's go to this next little page over here oh man i just cannot do this yeah so there we go we have a little creative activities in children's space and that's exactly what these last few pages are i see now and then you get 18 pages of information about the dinosaur itself. We also have our standard booklet from PNSO, something you usually get with pretty much every release. And then as we kind of run through this, we usually have some really nice images of the Sintosaurus, beautiful kind of black and white image right there. Again, more information on the dinosaur, the species, the company, all kinds of fun stuff. And then as we continue along, you have lots of information. Somewhere we're probably going to start to get kind of like a photo gallery of the figure. There's another nice black and white image. There we go. So now you can see again we have some more images of the figure. I really, really love the paint scheme they went with on this one. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking coloration and paint scheme. Nice to see them giving it a pretty colorful but really nice and realistic color scheme. Something a lot of people complain about when it comes to many different releases from PNSO is that they always give them like brown colors and stripes or something. I actually love the paint schemes that PNSO has been giving their figures from the onset of these newer figures. Ever since they had begun, I have yet to see a paint scheme that looked anything but fantastic. But not everyone likes the fact that they are, again, consistently like brownish colors with stripes. But here we have quite a bit of color. We have some beautiful greens. We've got some nice blues. Lots of coloration included on this. And again, as you go through, you just see lots of different images. In this, I would imagine, is kind of like a preview of maybe some of the stuff we're going to see in the like posters and stuff that are included with this. I really love that up there. That is just awesome. But again, you are just filled to the top with awesome stuff inside that booklet and then we are going to check out so we usually have these little uh, pages here that kind of give you the ability to draw on them and they include quite a few so I think that's what all of these are 
Yeah, definitely. So these are the papers that they give you to draw your own dinosaurs if you would like to. And then we start with the really cool posters and stuff. So straight away, we've got ourselves a really cool image. And I'm shocked that this is not like some sort of a Cintosaurus or even like a similar species. I'm quite intrigued to see what all they're going to have in here. Oh yeah, see, we're going to continue on with some very cool species that again are not directly related to the dinosaur itself as far as like being the same family of dinosaurs and you get the species title of each of the dinosaurs down in the left hand corner or at least i think you do i'm pretty sure that's how it usually works and then if we go on to the next page again we've got sauropods this time and lots and lots of really cool stuff i love the artwork from pns so you always get so much when it comes to these museum releases and again, species title right down there. This is actually a species that I've never really looked too far into. One I'm definitely going to have to look into in the future. And this one's pretty cool because if you can see the species title right there, that's kind of a preview there of a figure that we are going to be reviewing here on the channel very soon. Again, absolutely gorgeous looking artwork. That is a figure I cannot wait to get up here on the channel. And then as we continue along, here we go. We've got ourselves a Shantungasaurus, and that is one that is actually already released by PNSO as well, and uh, a gorgeous figure they have out of that one. I don't know if it's still available. I think it is. It was one of the big vinyl models that they had released, but that's, again, beautiful artwork. As we move along here, ooh, look at that. I would love to see a Satakasaurus released by PNSO, especially if it looked something like that. As far as the coloration goes, that is super, super flashy, beautiful looking. Definitely would love to see that. And then as we go along, okay, so now we've got ourselves the four limbs of a Sintosaurus. So now we are actually getting some art and images actually associated directly with this dinosaur that is included. And as we go along here, there we go. A beautiful image of the head of a Sintosaurus with that really nice coloration up there in the crest area. Not exactly the color that we see on our Sintosaurus figure, but still really nice and natural looking. Then we've got ourselves a look at the skull of the Sintosaurus, that very unique and interesting looking skull, which also looks very cool. And then, again, you get so much different artwork. You could really take each and every one of these museum releases that PNSO gives you and basically dedicate an entire wall to the artwork that they supply you with again beautiful image here that's actually again a really nice coloration not exactly what we see on our figure this time around either but another beautiful paint scheme or color scheme i should say for a Sintosaurus. and again more fantastic artwork there's just so much included so we're going to get some bigger posters now there is a huge one again with a nice black and white image of the head of the Sintosaurus, as well as again the species name and stating that this is going to be the scientific art exhibition from the Sintosaurus, or for I should say the Sintosaurus. So we're probably going to have quite a few larger ones now, similar to what we had seen in the booklet as far as the display goes. And there's a beautiful, really big image again of the species. Another totally different appearance for this one. Actually, this probably is the same head sculpt that we had just seen prior so now we have a look at the whole body again this is you can see my hand in comparison this one's a much larger image than the ones that we were starting out with and then we've got ourselves another one i have to keep putting the camera down to open them up this one's a pretty cool size chart i do recall them doing this previously if i get this to stay open and i really liked when they had done that you've got quite a bit of uh, different species included in this one. Everything from warthogs to cynoceratops showing us the comparison as far as a size goes to the Sintosaurus. So an awesome size chart. Definitely some really cool stuff that again you could easily throw up on your wall to complete a beautiful display. Now this is what I love. Absolutely love posters like this. Just Again, PNSO is responsible for some of the absolute most beautiful artwork you will ever see. And that is definitely exactly what I see here on that poster. That is just incredible. Some unbelievable artwork is consistently included with these releases. The stuff that I really want to put in frame and put up on my wall. But see, they put so many in here that it's just impossible to choose between. Like, how beautiful is that? I really could not pick, like, if I had to go back and go through every one of these museum series releases and just, like, pick one poster to frame and display on my wall, 
I really don't think I could do that. I'd have to pick numerous from each release because they're always so good. It's literally impossible to choose just one. And then as we move along, we've got ourselves another really big image this time of the Shantungasaurus we were just speaking of. Really cool looking, nice dark brownish color scheme with some really light hints of greens in there, which looks really neat. Again, another very large one. And then as we move along, we're getting close to the end here. Here we go with some more fantastic artwork. And I think this might have actually been the image that I was just stating I really loved back there on the booklet that we were taking a look at. But you can see again, some more Shantungasaurus this time, obviously crossing some sort of a river potentially that's flooding. And they are definitely experiencing some issues and clearly look very panicked. And then as we move along, we're going to see what else is going on in the image. So definitely a lot going on as far as this goes. We've also got ourselves the Sinoceratops in here this time, but you can again see that they are clearly trying to cross a river and experiencing something that is probably not a good time. As we move along here, we've got even more. This time we've got ourselves the Sinoceratops again, who we were just speaking of. Really cool artwork. Again, a beautiful color scheme. Sometimes I want to just take these posters and just borrow the paint schemes that they give them to put on figures that I'm painting. And then we are at the final one included here. And wow, look at that. Again, this is something that is a species of a dinosaur that we are about to review from PNSO as well. And uh, you can obviously see again what species we are looking at. If you have been following along with the PNSO line, you will know that this was just recently released and will be up for review here on the channel very soon. So that completes all of the incredible extras, the incredible artwork again, so much all the time when it comes to these PNSO releases. You just get a ton of stuff with these museum series releases. And then this time we actually have a really cool stand for our Sintosaurus. It's got a PNSO logo right there, nice professional looking stand. And then our Sintosaurus itself. And look at how beautiful that is. And just like I was stating, I had seen other people and posting images of theirs and stuff like Killer Shrew fan who had posted images of his. I really took note to how nice the paint job on the factory released version was in comparison to the prototype. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at this right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Sintosaurus, you've got the dinosaur with its mouth in a nice closed position, nice and natural looking as if it's just kind of walking along, maybe trying to pick out some vegetation it would like to feed on. If you get nice and close and my camera will focus, there we go, you can see how incredible and how unbelievably highly detailed that head is especially when it comes to the scale detail and you can see the scale detail on top of being insanely well done is extremely vibrant like it just absolutely pops on the head sculpt you can see that there is absolutely no muted detail on this figure anywhere that is just some of the absolute most gorgeous scale detail and skin texture i think i've ever seen on a dinosaur figure and that does not just stick here with the face as you move up into the crest that very trademark Sintosaurus crest you can see that as well is super nice looking as far as the skin texture goes and you can also see that as far as the face goes coloration wise we have a few different variations of lighter and darker browns but as we move up into the crest you can see that we transition to a really nice very light green that transitions to a yellow and then transitions to almost like an orange up at the top really smooth transitions between those colors and you also have a black that kind of runs along the outer edge of the crest really flashy exactly what you would like to see on the crest of a dinosaur like this so that looks great you can also see the nostrils are very nicely sculpted out you have kind of a gloss coat here on the upper part of the snout you can see there's a little area of red there leading up from the nostrils on both sides as well which i really like the beak sports some fantastic detail as well as some really nice paintwork again it darkens pretty nicely there toward the tip of the beak so we have a much darker brown there as you lead down into the neck you can see some really nice skin wrinkling, skin creasing, especially down here in the throat, but also leading up here along the side of the head. The dinosaur has its head turned in a left-leaning position, so that's exactly the type of detail you would expect to see. And before I actually go any further, you can also see the eyes are painted with a nice black, nothing more than strictly a black color, but it has a very nice gloss coat to it, so it shines very realistically. You can also see the ear 
right here as you lead down into the neck but as you continue down throughout the course of the neck the neck looks extremely muscular it looks nice and thick and you also see a ton of skin details skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff again showing off the turn in the neck in brilliant fashion that is just absolutely gorgeous just drop dead gorgeous detailing easily one of the best companies in the world when it comes to producing detail on their dinosaur figures is pns so i really can't think of many companies that can compete with them as far as showing off every ounce of detail that you would expect to find and if you look here you can see again how super smooth the transitions between colors are like you can see kind of like a light yellow up here as you transition down you have green and then as you transition down to the underside you have kind of like a reddish brown and all of those colors transition super smooth you've also got these really nice kind of darker brown stripes but as you move up they transition as well to a bluish tone of color and they are extremely nicely applied really smooth as far as the again transitions but also as far as the application of the paint it's just very very nicely done it looks 100% like body color and in no way shape or form just paint on a figure you can also see some of the kind of ridges picking up here along the back of the neck of the dinosaur and the increase in size as you reach the mid back area you can see they get quite a bit larger you continue on with that striping down the course of the body again mixing with the nice blues and then the darker browns as you move down here into the limbs of the dinosaur again more really nice skin wrinkling and skin folding showing the fact that the limb here is pushed back a little bit kind of wrinkling that skin right there more really nice skin creasing right there and you can see just kind of like variations of greens like there's lighter and darker shades of greens just within the regular green areas of the dinosaur really nice realistic looking paintwork as far as like skin tone goes and again even some lighter greens right here you can see the skin stretching beautifully here in the joint of the elbow the elbow itself back here and then as you move down into the foot of the dinosaur you can see a really nice transition to a darker coloration here as you lead down into the foot you can see the nails are nicely sculpted out very nicely painted painted with a very dark gray as you move back up here into the body again you can see more incredible skin wrinkling and skin folding here in the lower part of the stomach and especially right here in front of the thigh the thigh is pushing into the body really wrinkling that skin up quite beautifully again the actual scale detail although super fine once you get nice and close look at how insanely beautiful that detailing is like that is just honestly the type of detail i could probably just stare at and it would continue to blow my mind the longer I stare at it. There's just so much scale detail included in the stomach region of this dinosaur and it's so fine like once you move a little bit further away you really can't pick up on it quite as nicely but once you get close and really take it all in that is just unbelievable. The dinosaur also seems to have potentially like a dark wash applied but it's a really like it's a darker wash but it's lightly applied like you almost can't even pick up on it but in certain areas like here in the underside you can really see it down here but it's even down here it's not that visible but it's definitely there i really like how subtle that is and on the underside actually you can see again more really nice skin wrinkling and stuff some more color variation as we have shades of like the reddish brown even like some light tans and then some more greens and stuff here as well as again more incredible scale detail as we move back here along the course of the dinosaur you see that those ridges up there on the top continue to remain pretty much the same size and uh, as you move down here into the hip you can see the hip bone there protruding from the skin as well as some very nice muscle definition in the thigh you can also see the skin stretching off of the tail here because this leg is taking a step forward stretching that skin really nicely you've got the kneecap right there in the front of the leg you've also got some nice skin detail here in the rear of the knee you've also got a very large bulging calf muscle you've also again got some of those darker stripes leading down the course of the leg as you move down into the foot we have some more very nice kind of like creasing and wrinkling there in the ankle area beautiful foot sculpt again the nails are painted very nicely with the dark gray like we saw on the front of the body and then as we lead up here we can see that those stripes continue to move along the course of the dinosaur there's a very nice bend in the tail in a downward fashion the further out into the body we go the ridges continue to decrease in size as well when we look up here at the tail running along again the spinal column and you can see they decrease in size as you reach the tip of the tail very very nice very natural looking you know bend in the tail there as you look here at the opposing side the sculpt work yet again is absolutely phenomenal but the paintwork again is extremely precise looks pretty much exactly like it did 
on the initial side, which is definitely a great thing. You can see again the big bulkiness to the neck of our Cintasaurus, as well as that really nice naturalistic application of the paint. Again, they're extremely smooth transitions. The limbs here in the front are in pretty much the same position. You can see slight differences as far as the placement of the feet go, but they're not too different. So you're really not going to see too much difference as far as like detail over here compared to what we saw on the initial side, but that means you're also going to see like that same style of detail where you can see like the elbow nicely back here, some nice stretching of the skin there in the joint of the elbow, as well as again, some creasing up here at the area where the limb connects to the body. As you move up here into the stomach, you get again see a very nice amount of those beautiful scales, extremely highly detailed as far as this figure goes. If we turn it here, you can also pick up on the rib cage, which almost is really not that visible until you let the light shine off of it, but you can definitely pick up on the rib cage nicely right there. And again, incredibly smooth transitions back and forth between lighter and darker shades of color and then leading up into the yellows up here at the top as well as those blues. You can see the skin kind of stretching off of the stomach, yet wrinkling, increasing very nicely right there, again showing off the movement of the leg. The hip bone is present over here like we saw on the initial side. Again, some more fantastic muscle definition moving down the entire course of the leg from the thigh down into the calf. Very nice foot sculpt, yet again like we saw on the initial side, again with the nicely painted nails. And then we lead up here and run along the tail. You can see the skin kind of stretching here. The tail is bending away from us over here. So you can definitely see that. I like how these stripes are really, really vibrant, but they kind of fade out the further out into the tail you go. Really cool looking paintwork. We also do have, again, some more really nice kind of skin detail, skin creasing and everything here for the underside A cloaca, which potentially is one of the most highly detailed cloacas I've ever seen on a dinosaur figure. You can even see incredible skin stretching here on the underside. So like PNSO absolutely goes the extra mile when it comes to detailing their figures. And this as well on top of the detail, again, might be one of the nicest painted figures from PNSO I've ever seen. When it comes to a Cintosaurus, I highly doubt we will ever see a better Cintosaurus than this one. As far as a size goes, for a length we can keep it up here, but when we get a height we should probably bring it down. For a length you were looking at about eight and a quarter inches or around 21 centimeters, and then for a height it would probably make more sense to kind of get that out of the way. The highest point would be the crest. You're looking at about three and a half inches or nine centimeters, and then if you display it up here on the base, or stand, it's not really a base, you're looking at probably around the four and a quarter inches, maybe a little bit over or around 11 centimeters. This stand that is with it is very intriguing because there's like holes, almost like there should have been pegs to hold something up. But instead of the pegs, we just get a really nice Centosaurus to sit up there on that. But again, if we exclude this completely and then we bring in some figures for a size comparison, we've got ourselves, Mr. Papo T-Rex, as well as Robert Muldoon, and the attack pack Clovis source to show again the fact that this isn't all that large of a figure. It's not very big, but it's also not too small. Definitely a really nice size, but as far as most hadrosaurs that PNSO has released, this is definitely one of the smaller ones. But for a second size comparison, here is the Cynoceratops, who we had just seen, you know, promoted quite a bit there with our Cintosaurus, giving you a rough idea of the size. Definitely a very sizable Cynoceratops in comparison to our Cintosaurus. And then for another comparison, we, oh, well, I knocked that one over, but we've got ourselves the Corythosaurus in comparison to the Cintosaurus. And you can really see the Corythosaurus is much larger than our Cintosaurus. I've heard so many people mention that their Corythosaurus does not stand for them. Mine stands perfectly, still has this whole time. So that's very interesting, but Again, you can see the Corythosaurus really outsizes that Cintosaurus. For another comparison, we'll move our Cintosaurus back, and then we'll bring in the Tarbosaurus to show you in comparison to the Cintosaurus. Again, showing off the fact that the Tarbosaurus definitely is quite a bit larger. Very, very chunky Tarbosaurus, but quite possibly the most beautiful Tarbosaurus ever. And then we've got ourselves, Wilson, who is definitely not going to stand. That is one figure that I have some standing issues with, but you can definitely see in comparison to the Cintosaurus that Wilson is quite a bit larger as well, but that seems to be a pretty common trend when it comes to this figure. And for a very interesting comparison, we also have the initial Cintosaurus that was released 
by PNSO in comparison to the newer one. Obviously, the older one, although a beautiful figure, is a much smaller scale than our current one. Really small in comparison. And then for two final comparisons, here is the Sintosaurus in comparison to the PNSO Iguanodon, a very recent release from PNSO. And then the final one is also a fairly recent release, and we have the Ulera Titan in comparison again to our Sintosaurus. And I think all of these comparisons have definitely proven one thing to me, and that is that PNSO is responsible for some of the most beautiful dinosaur figures I have ever seen. So this brand new PNSO Sintosaurus might be one of their best figures yet. It really is an extremely striking and incredibly beautiful release from them. The sculpt is again fantastic. When you get nice and close you can really see how unbelievable the scale detail is as well as all of the skin wrinkles and skin folds and due to a lot of the lighter tones of color that are on this figure it really highlights the scale detail and also shows you just how vibrant the detailing is on a PNSO release. They are absolutely one of the best companies in the world when it comes to producing dinosaur figures and especially when it comes to producing highly detailed dinosaur figures and this Sintel source is a perfect example of that. The paint job as well is gorgeous. Really, really nice. Really flashy coloration for the figure, but at the same time, it is extremely realistic and natural, and the coloration is just so nicely applied. The transitions back and forth between colors is incredibly smooth, even in the stripes. Like, the stripes are one thing that many times you would see stripes on dinosaur figures just looking like not realistic coloration. It just kind of looks like paint on a figure. No way, shape, or form is that the case here on this Sintosaurus. The coloration is as smooth and naturalistic as it gets. You have many different tones of color included even in the greens of the figure. So there's a lot of really nice realistic skin tone. And it also has this really nice kind of dark wash, but it's a really subtle dark wash. And that kind of ties all the paint together and just again amps up the realism of the figure. The balance as well is extremely nice on the figure. I think the size is nice as well. It's not overly large, not overly small, just a beautifully sized figure. You also get all of those really cool extras as well as a very interesting stand to display your Sintosaurus on. So unquestionably, this is a fantastic release on the part of PNSO and definitely one of my favorite figures to come from them in a very long time, which is Something I say a lot when it comes to these PNSO reviews because they continuously one-up themselves, I think, and yet again, they have definitely done that here with this Sintosaurus. So if you are interested in picking this up, I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on the Amazon PNSO store, and I do believe this is available on there for Prime shipping, so it would be here to you in like two days if you are a prime customer like you would get it really quickly so again make sure you check the link in the description as i will include a link to both the amazon pnso store as well as the aliexpress pnso store where you can purchase this gorgeous figure for yourself and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching